Chrissy, I was just thinking, you've won seven hurling titles in a row in Derry. Yeah. And considering you were away in the AFL for a while, how many games have you ever lost in the Derry Hurling Championship? That I've played in? Yeah. Um, well, I, I think, I need to go back through the history books, but I started playing in 2006, something like that. So a um, couple of leading off years at the start. Uh, we're beating the final 2009, I think, after a replay by Kevin Lynch's. And then I went to Australia, and then the first year back we were beat by Kevin Lynch's again. And then the following year was 13, we won seven in a row. So I'm not sure, but I suppose the last seven years has been great. But prior to that was, to be honest, bleak enough. Yeah. Like, uh, and everyone's seen the videos, the AIB videos and all that kind of stuff, of the community and all that kind of stuff. But you still have to have the raw materials. Was the, Do you reckon like raw materials was always there just to put it together? Look, I think you know lots has been has been said about Slaneil being you know a great club, and there is that sense of tradition and togetherness and pride. But to be honest, I, I see so many other clubs with exactly the same type of traditions and pedigrees and all them different things as Slaneil. To be honest, I think that's part and parcel of the vast vast majority of GA clubs you go to from the top of. The, from the, the top of Ireland to the bottom of Ireland. Um, I think the club campaigns just showcase it better because mm. you get actually to see what happens in the club environments. You get to see when a club goes on a run, the pride that it brings the area. And that's no different in Derry to Cork, to Galway, to Dublin, wherever it is. I think there's a, there's a real correlation there that the club game is still very much the lifeblood of the GA. And I think... God forbid the day that we ever forget that because I think in some parts we're maybe edging away from realising how important the GA is or the club GA is because you ask any player, well the vast majority of them anyway, they're going to have a huge a huge uh, passion to play for their club and when they get a wee bit of success maybe they start to realise more how much it means to the people mm. and how special the end days are. So you know the way like you've had kind of the jewel thing going for a number of years now, winning in both codes in Ulster and, and obviously the county before that. Yeah. Just in terms of like managing your body and even focusing on the skills of one game alone, irrespective of which code you're coming through in, is, is it very much helpful for your hurling that you can focus on hurling alone for the last maybe month or so, whatever it is? <coughs> um, hugely, I think that's the nail on the head. You know, especially coming from Derry, we don't, we don't pull any punches. Where we're situated geographically, um, the tradition of hurling Ulster is obviously not going to be as strong as parts of Connacht, Munster, and Leinster. So, automatically, you don't you're you're not privy to the same amount of games of the same level of intensity or quality as you would be playing Ballyhill, Kula, the Piercia, whatever. Mm. Um, so, being out of the football allows us to probably concentrate more on the technical side of the game that we need to work on. Probably physically, we're grand. Because we, we train pretty hard and we have the football side of things and all the rest of it. So it's just about getting our, our hurling to a technical level, which is the biggest challenge. Because obviously we don't play hurling maybe as much as the sole hurling clubs, especially in clubs the likes of Kilkenny or Limerick or wherever else that hurling their number one sport. Mm. So we have them challenges, but look, at least this year is the first year that we haven't had to contend with football. It's not exactly something that you would maybe prefer, but... When you look at it logically, it's certainly, it's certainly more helpful than, than not. And uh, you know, the last number of weeks we've been able to do a lot of hurling, which probably in years gone past we haven't been able to do. Because if I think of a couple of years ago, uh, <coughs> when Wakula we met you in the All Ireland semi final, and one of the the semi final you had against if I remember, was it Austin Stacks? Yeah. That had to be moved either one of the games had to be moved a week round, and I thought to myself, how tough was that on you trying to prepare for two semi finals psychologically and skill wise? Yeah, um, I suppose our, our football maybe are slightly different. Well, especially back then, it was a sl slightly different journey because, you know. <coughs> Football, we probably got to a level where we were competitive against the best teams. Mm. They all be it, not just because you're here, but Kula were one of the best club teams I have ever encountered physically, technically. Just we're a work in progress, I'd imagine, for a long time, and mm. you know we're we're pretty we're pretty hot that year, and we just couldn't live with Kula. But you know we we went away and learned, and the following year we improved astronomically. You know we 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 pushed probably Napierce to the pin of their colours, and maybe a wee bit of 
lack of belief or a lack of experience, but maybe a mixture of both. Mm. We we came undone, but we have an unbelievable task against Ballyhill again. But again, we take confidence from the fact that Ballyhill are, you know, they're every bit as good, maybe slightly better. People could argue than Killer or Napiersha. That's up for the bit, but certainly M3 teams are the top table. Mm. Do you, ever, do you ever feel like a lot of the teams that come out of Ulster, and not to band all Ulster teams, is similar, but in, in these sort of close games or when it's there in the melting pot, like yourselves against Napier, Sh- Shane Dowling with that unbelievable goal, um, even last year you look at Cushendall yeah. going so close yeah. against St. Thomas, is there sort of an inferiority complex there at all? And I don't mean that <coughs> in an insulting yeah. way. Um, look, I, 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 I can't speak on behalf of North Antrim clubs or anybody that's been there before, but... I think possibly for us, we, we against the Persia, we were probably shocked. Mm. Um, we prepared really well. We played good talent games and all the rest of it. But for Slan Eel, it's been a journey of trying to break the glass ceiling time after time, mm. you know. And uh, I think we came away after the Persia game realizing, you know what, this is not under County Hurling. This is Club Hurling for a start. Um, we can be hugely competitive if we look after our own house, and. Uh, we went away and we took confidence from that, albeit a defeat, and that's not something Slan Hill take overly well. But um, I think we've learned from it and gathered confidence from it. The issue is for us is we've now drawn Bally Hill, and look, the last three the last three draws of the semi finals have been far from favourable. But if somebody had offered Slan Hill Hurling Club this this chance over the last four years, you would have said. Oh, We'll, we'll, we'll absolutely take that so we have to focus on how much we've improved because there's huge there's huge prestige and there's huge there's huge pride in that for us mm-hmm. Like, How big of a blow was it to lose to Ballycran of down last year because I'd say that was just a shock throughout anyone who's interested in her Perhaps but you look at things you, you try to look at things logically mm-hmm. we're beating the football and I don't want to make excuses because Ballycrown were well worth a victory and would have beat us maybe. I know it doesn't really matter, but we're ravaged by injury, confidence, form. We're a club team. We're not a county team. We don't have an uh, unlimited supply of resources or players. We have players doubling up. And like any other year, you've seen it with, with even the mighty Cora Finn, one of the, probably the best club team ever, when Crokes beat them comprehensively in a, in a semi-final. Things can happen in championship sport if you're not on your game and players suffering from injury or loss of form it can happen so we just accepted it but we made pretty 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 sure that this year we're going to set our stall out to get to, to get back to an Ulster final and won it back don't forget we're still the only dairy club that ever won an Ulster club hurling championship and now we have three and four years so you've got to be appreciative of what you have and I think when you show that type of gratitude you can take a step back and say so far we've had a pretty good innings mm. and then of course in the background, there's got, always got to be this chase for that All Ireland title, whichever code it is, because you got so close against um, against Doctor Crokes yeah. as well. And obviously, I don't want to pin it on the red yeah. card alone. Yeah. But you know, you're in a great spot. Does it feel like you're on a never-ending voyage? Well, that's it. You know, I'd be lying if I said to you now that it doesn't hurt that we don't have a national title in football or hurling. Why would I not say that? I mean, we're ambitious. We're competitive as a club. Our Camogiers have won three in a row. They're going for their fourth. Um, so, the national breakthrough is the hardest one. Um, it probably hasn't been helped that we were battling on two fronts the last couple of campaigns. Again, we're not a big club and we have a huge number of dual players, so we have to be fortunate with injuries and them different things. And if it does feel like the Crooks one, we let one slip. The Hurlands may be a different type of predicament because we're... We're a dairy club playing hurling at the top level, so we've made a huge number of strides to get even to this level, so we have to be logical about it too. But um, look, Ballyhill is another test. It's another opportunity. We hope we can take it, but if we don't, we can take away the lessons to try and get better again. But um, we keep putting ourselves in these type of positions, so we're doing something right. And just a quick word on dairy then. Rory Gallagher been yeah. appointed for uh, 2020. Are you, are you happy with that one? Yep. Hugely happy. I think it's just what Derry needed. Experience. Someone that's been around the top level. And uh, look, the media and certain people like to feed the narrative that Rory can only play a certain brand of football. But I think any players or people that know Rory know how intelligent he is, know what an excellent tactician he is, and know how single-minded and ambitious he is. 
people that understand football know that it's just not a matter of sending people out and putting 15 behind the ball. If you have played that way in the past and got success, you're a pretty good tactician. Um, and what people don't understand is, from looking at from the last couple of years, they were creating a huge number of chances. With all due respect to them, maybe they just didn't have a David Clifford or a Cahal McShane or a Matty Donnelly to finish off the chances. Mm -hmm. Sometimes these narratives run out of control. I'd be hugely happy with Rudy Geller and the players have been hugely supportive of him so far. He's a winner, he's a modern tactician, he's a modern manager and uh, with the underage success Derry have had in the last number of years, I think, honestly, he's a perfect fit. Because like, I'd be thinking the last number of years, because during the league the Schlock Neil players aren't there most of the time, that's part of the reason that you went down to Division 4 and surely just not having those players there for three or four months that, that kind of lowers the level even within training. Is that fair? Well, it certainly doesn't help. Um, we're not a huge county or whatever else, but I think, look, when you experience two consecutive relegations, it's usually multifactorial. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not going to go into all the different factors, but um, I, I honestly believe that Derry have made a lot of the right appointments in the last two or three months and I think from a player perspective there's a huge enthusiasm and a huge motivation to play for Derry that arguably hadn't been there in the last couple of years so we're moving in the right direction <laughs> challenges for Derry now it's I've never seen a more competitive or a better quality division three and the prize is massive mm -hmm. because you want to be finishing top two in that division so um, big big challenges ahead Great stuff and best of luck on both fronts Thank in the you. coming weeks. So.